iron and nickel are the two most abundant siderophile elements. Iron is also among the most abundant elements together with magnesium, silicon, but also oxygen. Now iron is about an order of magnitude more abundant than nickel, more precise 15 to 16 times more abundant. So iron in first approximation has an abundance that is a little more than an order of magnitude higher than nickel. And this is the reason why metal in primitive chondrites, but also the cores of asteroids, has a composition of about 90 plus, 93, 94 weight iron, and the rest is nickel. Of course, there's also some minor siderophile elements. So if you want to understand um, what phases iron and nickel produce and what the metal look like in primitive chondrites, but also the cores of asteroids, it's helpful to look at the iron-nickel phase diagram shown here. Now, as said, iron has an abundance uh, about an order of magnitude higher than nickel, which means the interesting range is something like here. So with about 90 plus weight percent iron and the rest nickel. So assuming that the metal in the core of an asteroid or in a chondrule or even as an individual grain free floating in the, in the solar nebula getting hotter so is molten at one time, the composition would start something like up here. And then this is hitting the solidus, which is very narrow range, so it will very quickly solidify into um, a solid solution series here. And the solid solution series consists of gamma iron and gamma nickel. So gamma iron is a iron, the, the iron rich side of the solid solution and gamma nickel, the nickel rich side of the solid solution. And the gamma iron is also called taenite, which is, which is shown up here. So this is taenite. This is a nickel rich iron poor, comparatively iron poor uh, metal. And this is then hitting at some temperature, something like maybe 700 degrees or so, a solvus. And here it decomposes into, well, still remaining gamma iron, of course, and then also into alpha iron. And this alpha iron is also called, as you can see up here, camasite. So this here, this alpha iron here is camasite. So here are two phases then, the taenite and the camasite. Now with decreasing temperature, the camasite will become increasingly more nickel rich. So this is the camasite and the taenite at approximately 600 degrees. And this will continue. And this means that at some point, maybe even something like 35, 40% nickel might be reached in the camasite. And this is why in this phase diagram, the entire range between maybe five and 50 atom percent, or which translates more or less also into weight percent because they have about similar masses. Um, so this is the interesting range here in this phase diagram. And this also means that in the end, the composition of the metal um, is usually, well, consists usually of two phases. One is the camasite, the iron rich nickel poor metal, and the taenite, the more nickel rich and more iron poor metal. Now the phase diagrams, of course, also depend on the pressure. And this is shown in this little inset here. So here are three pressures, 0.1 pascals, 5 gigapascals and 10 gigapascals. And typically in asteroids, the pressure inside usually never increases above something like 1 gigapascals. So usually only um, this, this one single diagram here is important. And as you can see here again, this is basically showing the same as I just explained, that at around 600, something like degrees, depending on composition, so this would be rather, or 700 would be rather here, the decomposition starts into uh, camasite and taenite here and then continues to a certain temperature. As you can see in the large diagram here, there's this uh, darker blue area and in principle, below a certain temperature, something like maybe 360 degrees or so, Celsius always, there's an additional decomposition of remaining alpha iron, but the gamma iron then basically transforms into an iron nickel 3. But this transformation 
never really happens because it's at such low temperatures that the thermodynamics or the, the, the kinetics are so slow that this transformation doesn't really happen. But these are the three principal phases possible in this phase diagram, the camasite, the taenite, and this iron nickel 3, but in, usually in mitras you only see the camasite and the taenite. Now the decomposition of this camasite and taenite goes sometimes into lamella, for example, so there might be lamella of, of camasite, and then maybe there's another lamella, which is taenite, and again some camasite, so this would be taenite, this is again camasite or different structures, this is then again camasite and taenite whatsoever. So there are certain lamella of these two phases, which is often seen in iron meteorites when they are cut and then slightly etched with a nitric acid because these two phases have different resi resistances to, the, to, the, um, to the, the acid and how they are dissolved in the acid. So these lamella can be seen and the width of these lamella can be measured and the width of these lamella are then, um, can then be used to determine the cooling history, the cooling gradient of the metal that um, one is looking at. And by this it's possible, for example, to estimate the cooling rate of uh, the metal core of an, of an asteroid or even of a metal blab within a conduit or something like this. So this is the iron nickel phase diagram, can be used for cooling rates and explains why we observe camasite and taenite within meteorites.